Crocodiles might get all the street cred as far as prehistoric creatures go in northern Australia. There's another frightening looking critter that could give them a run for their money or longevity, and that's the sawfish. They've been swimming about for about 60 million years, a fair old slog on anyone's reckoning. The sawfish is actually a type of modified ray with a shark like body and can reach up to seven metres in length. They once swam in warm waters around the world. Now, they're amongst the most endangered species on the planet. The only remaining stronghold of four of the five species is here in northern Australia, thanks largely to our remote and untouched coastlines. But you might be thinking, this isn't a wildlife show, so what's the link? Well, one group that have daily interactions with these creatures are fishos. The extensive miles they spend at sea, often over many years, means whether they realise it or not, they possess critical knowledge of the occurrence, seasonal presence and long-term changes happening to sawfish populations. So this project uh, was, as far as we know, the first time where professional fishers' knowledge has been, I guess, sourced um, and collected and interpreted and used through a research project involving social science, natural science, industry for conservation management of these species. The project was funded by Parks Australia and supported by the Australian Institute of Maritime Science, Charles Darwin University and the NT Seafood Council. Northern Australia is one of the few places left in the world with sawfish and river shark populations, making it a key priority to protect them. A major challenge is the lack of information on current populations, which limits the ability to develop effective management strategies. But how does one extract that info from a community that's pretty private and, let's face it, doesn't necessarily always harbour great affection or trust for scientists? There is sectors of the industry that don't believe that. They think that um, they'll, something will happen because the scientists are there. Peter Manning has been a sea dog much of his life. I've fished for approximately 40 years, and mainly in the barramundi industry and the Spanish mackerel industry. Uh, I started in the barra industry in the 70s, and um, I fished all around the coast of the Territory from the Daly River around to almost the Queensland border. During his time on the water, sawfish were a common sight. We'd have one that was a wide, uh, bill with um, big teeth, another one with a narrow bill with little spiny teeth and, we'd, and another one that have got a kind of a greeny colour on their, their um, bill. So we just know them by that, you know, the slimy one or the, the little one with the little teeth. Punish for a sawfish. Their large size and long toothed rostrum or saw makes them vulnerable to capturing fishing nets. When we caught swordfish in the neck, you know, we were all going to take them out and release them live if possible. You know, there's, there's, there could have been a case where we didn't, but the, on the majority, they'd be released um, unharmed. You know, I've always had the view that everything deserves to live. You know, if, if I'm catching something that's, that's for consumption, for food, I've got no problem, you know, taking it. But if it's not, I don't like to waste. Encounters and their access to such remote areas that made fishermen the ideal research partners for the study to better understand the underwater creatures. And they've captured the process on film. So of the 16 professional fishers we interviewed, some about half were retired, some were still current active in the fishery. The majority of data on sawfish and river sharks has been collected in rivers or coastal environments in northern Australia. There's little known about their occurrence and movement offshore. Cameron Berryman has vessels fishing right across Australia and was also part of the study and field work. Our goal is to have a very sustainable fishery and a, and a good fishery, but we've got to be careful that the data that we share doesn't get used against us in a negative way. So, um, you know, we, we had a look, but with a group like Ames, it was a, it was a fantastic project. Uh, and with the work with the Seafood Council in the background, it, it was a no-brainer for us to join the project. Wow. 
um, head up here. Too. He says fishers were chuffed to be asked about their work. The crew came in really pumped. You know, they, they were so great, you know, that their knowledge was being used to A, protect these creatures and gather data on, on the sawfish, but also that, that they were getting listened to. You know, th th these guys know where they are. They, they got a general idea of their movements. And, you know, sometimes you read scientists and uh, or listen to scientists and they try and tell you what's happening and you know otherwise. And it was great that the scientists came and, and grabbed the knowledge of these guys and used it. The information gathered is yet to be published, but it will be used to target the areas where scientists can go to sample and tag species in remote coastal and estuarine areas of the NT. This project was very much focused on trying to co-produce knowledge um, and pilot uh, an approach where we could um, draw on social science generated research, um, use that to inform identification of ecological field sites for more research and pull all that information together to try and address some of the gaps in our knowledge about threatened species in Northern Territory coastal waters. Other projects have gone weeks without tagging because they haven't known where exactly to focus. And when species are hard to study or elusive, then it's really important to get that information from fishers so the research can target the right areas. Because the numbers are so low, there isn't a lot that's known about basic things around sawfish, like how big they get, how old they grow, or how often they breed. Understanding things like the reproductive cycle are critical for the management of this endangered species. And that's where faunal collections like this and historic and contemporary observations of fish shows are so useful for filling those knowledge gaps around pupping season, offshore movements, and changes in the catch rate over time. And I think this research has shown us that, that working together and increasing those levels of trust are really important for getting good outcomes for the species. But protection isn't just about the sawfish. Fishermen, especially gill nets, have been blamed for declining populations. It's an accusation many think is unfair. Do you think that there is a negative impact from the commercial fishermen on the sawfish populations? Uh, I doubt very, very little. One, because of the, the, the limited area we work and, um, the, the, and the, the times that they come, um, you know, they're not there all the time. Fishermen say they know they need to get on board with science because it can work in their favour. Oh, I mean, when you invest in a fishery, you've got a big business, you know, you want to look at sustainability and make sure you're doing the best practices in everything you can do. Without a healthy fishery, we don't have a viable business. Well, it will, if there's good data, and that, that can be helpful in many ways, because they, they, you can't be attacked as, a, say, a commercial fisherman if they say the stocks are healthy. Absolutely. We're, We've got other projects underway now and, and you know we're always open for to be approached by scientists and scientific groups and work work together.